redox titrations. This lab will go over the guidelines of our very first redox titration. Usually, we associate titrations just with acid-base reactions, and often we are utilizing an indicator to signify when we've reached the stoichiometric point. Not with this lab. This lab involves a reducing and oxidizing agent that in and of themselves will undergo a color change to signify the equivalence point, stoichiometric point for us. Some safety precautions first. Potassium permanganate is a beautiful, it gives the appearance of a gray compound. However, when placed in water, it shows itself as a very deep violet colored solution. That compound, potassium permanganate, reacts with anything organic to create a, a deep brownish kind of compound. So we wanna make sure we're wearing gloves to just protect our skin. We wanna wear aprons to protect our clothing. And we wanna make sure that we are fully rinsing any equipment that came into contact with potassium permanganate because upon sitting, it will stain. In fact, our reagent bottles that'll hold our potassium permanganate solution look dirty, but they're just stained. So they're clean, but they're stained. So you wanna be careful about any paper that it comes into contact with. Um, we need to make sure we are um, being very cognizant of fully rinsing our burette after the potassium permanganate has been introduced because any plastic portions will become stained if tiny residue is left behind. We are also acidifying the iron solution. So we wanna be extra careful. We're using three molar sulfuric acid and then 85% phosphoric, which we know is a weak acid, but it's of high concentration. We just want to be um, cautious in its handling. So you're gonna follow your instructions and you'll need to first follow the mass that's given and we are going to make ourselves a potassium permanganate solution. You are simply adding the solid to the bottle and then adding almost, you know, up to um, where the um, portion or the bottle begins to narrow. That will be about 500 milliliters. And we're gonna standardize this so it's okay if we're a little bit greater in our solvent addition or lesser. Now, be careful too because we know that we want to agitate to help speed solution formation, but you have to be careful if you have any leaks. So if you want to get some paper towel, just to be extra cautious, because we of course should overturn this to make sure um, we've created a homogeneous um, solution. Whenever you are preparing your burette, you need to do three washings. Please make sure that you pass the potassium permanganate solution through, of course, the spout. So I encourage you to have just a waste beaker to catch overflow. Now, I um, definitely encourage you, if you would feel more comfortable, to utilize a funnel to go ahead and pour in any excess potassium permanganate solution, but you can, of course, loosen this at any time to add more. You want to be extra cautious that you are reading this on eye level and you do not read it until you've passed it through the spout to make sure you have a constant um, column of liquid. You need to talk with your lab partner because this is so deep in color. It's tricky to read the volume of. So talk with your lab partner and make a decision. Is it easiest to measure the very top where the liquid meets the sides of the burette? Now we know we read the bottom of the meniscus, but with this deep colored liquid, that may be easiest. Or can you see reflection and definitely read the bottom of the meniscus? Decide with your partner. And of course you can ask me for guidance. Because with this titration, we are after the difference in volume. As long as you are consistent with how you're reading it, either always from the top or always from the bottom, you will deliver fine results. Don't worry about needing to start at a certain um, volume. You know, you can always add. We want to start when it's at eye level. Again, you're going to follow the directions. You will create three samples of an acidified FAS solution. Now, our reactant ions in this lab are the aqueous permanganate, 
the aqueous 2 plus or plus 2 ion. The source of the permanganate is the potassium permanganate, but potassium is a spectator. The source of the iron plus 2 is FAS. That's the nickname we give it. And you'll understand why the name or the full formula is actually iron 2 ammonium sulfate hexahydrate. Whoo, quite a mouthful. So FAS for short. All the others are spectators. This delivers the iron 2 plus reactant. Now, um, we are going to acidify the environment. So you're going to follow the directions. You're going to add um, a certain amount of iron. Make sure we're doing uh, difference by mass. Um, I would go ahead with Sharpie and identify which is one, two, and three. So you can just keep track of them. But feel free. We don't have to use an Erlenmeyer. You can use a beaker. Now, I would um, instruct because it, we're probably going once we've added um, the water and the different acid amounts, you know, you're not going to have a ton of um, analyte volume. So we want to make sure that it's deep enough that you can definitely signify a color change. So if you want to use the Erlenmeyer to prevent splashing and loss of, of um, liquid, I encourage you to do that. But you can use a, a beaker as well. And you can also use a stir plate if you'd like. So remember, stir plate, we want to go ahead and carefully add our magnet, make sure it's placed centrally. And then when we turn on our stir, just get a nice gentle agitation. All right. So we have our three acidified iron samples. We know, because we've made them, given the mass of the FAS, we can then convert to get the moles of the iron plus two that's in each of our sample. Get the balanced reaction. You know how to create a um, balanced redox reaction. Remember, we're in a civic environment. Then what you will do is make sure that you are noting the initial volume and then very carefully and patiently, especially with your first trial, we are going to titrate until the reaction shows us that we've added enough permanganate to react all the iron plus two. So how will we know that? Well, the permanganate is this deep purple compound. Now, iron compounds are usually a mustard or a deep kind of pumpkin orange color. However, the other ions that are there um, gives FAS and the hydrate this appearance of a very mild green color. However, whenever you put it in water and then your acids, the concentration that we're making will definitely look clear. You will be adding this very, very intense purple liquid to a clear liquid. Purple, clear. Your products, this is unbalanced, unbalanced. Your products, are a clear ion and a clear ion and maybe some water clear. Maybe you're consuming hydrogen ion or producing hydrogen or hydronium ion clear. So you're taking something very intensely purple clear and getting clear product. So while there is iron present, iron plus two to react this, you will get clear, 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 clear. But as soon as this has been reacted away, then the unreacted permanganate ion will give the purple color. So you will titrate, slowing down when the purple color keeps staying around, staying around, staying around, and then stop when you have very, very light violet. That violet should remain. It could um, lessen in color um, after about 60 seconds. So as long as you have that just gorgeous, um, just palest purple. Now, sometimes the iron ion can be a little finicky and kind of show you a yellowish at times, but push through that. You're looking for the palest, palest purple, which eh, because you're adding purple, if it goes a little yellow, it could at times look peach, but you are looking for that pale purple. 
I will um, demonstrate that in just a moment, a little closer, so that you can um, see, you know, what kind of, of purple we're after. So, our first exercise, you know the mass of FAS, you can then get the moles of iron plus two, you will know the volume of potassium permanganate, you will have balanced and gotten the correct mole ratio of these ions, then you can determine the, to the level of sig figs that you're permitted per the instrumentation, the concentration of your potassium permanganate. Then part two, you're going to obtain 25 milliliter samples of your unknown, three trials. It's already acidified. You will start with that. You now know the concentration of this. So if we know the volume, the concentration, that allows us to, to calculate the moles. You have the balanced ion ratio of your reaction, but now we're looking for the concentration of the iron plus two or two plus here. So that is our exercise. Um, be very careful handling the potassium permanganate. This is a, a great adventure. I will challenge you to get the palest purple possible. Be really patient with the first trial and have the first trial inform your second and your third for both steps of this experiment because that gives you kind of an idea of the volume that um, your trial two and trial three of both parts will require. Best of luck, stay safe, enjoy this chemistry.